This video is going to explain to you the basic principles of Formula One, which the sport itself does not explain to viewers. The new breed of fan that this sport has sought to attract, it has never explained simple principles and as such people are ignorant and it is played on your ignorance. If you watch this through to the end, you will see that you've been lied to by the sport. So don't dismiss it. This will actually teach you more in this video than the sport itself has taught you about the sport. So I'm going to use this example of the 2020 Sakir Grand Prix. The actual um, track is a short track. I'll give you an example of the timing screens, which should be this. Um, last lap, a minute. So um, that would include pit times, I'm guessing. But the the lap times here around the Sakia track are around about the one one ten, one minute ten seconds as a last lap. When they've, they've uh, pitted, that can actually change the timing slightly. But if you look down the column here, which says last lap, around about one ten per lap. So I'm going to go back to the start of the slideshow and we'll go through exactly what the principles of the sport are, which should teach you things that the sport have not taught you. So I'm going to run you through a very simplified model, but you follow this model through and you will enhance your understanding. If, for example, the qualifying grid for a Grand Prix was as such, the pole position time was 1 minute 20, second place, 1 minute 20.25, so just a quarter of a second. Okay, now we know that this is overly simplified, but please stick with this because you will see the principle, because this is a principle of what the purpose of the sport is, what the purpose of the rules within that sport are. So, these are the top 10 in that grid. And we're going to just make the simple uh, assumption for the model that the, the gap between each car is a quarter of a second in terms of their, their best lap time. And that means that when you get down to 10th, they're actually 2.25 seconds per lap slower than the leader, which means after two laps, that 2.25 seconds between becomes four and a half seconds. After 10 laps, that 2.25 seconds becomes 22.5 seconds. OK, that's the way that things work. If you lap after lap after lap and each of those laps, you're losing two and a half seconds well you've lost two and a half you've lost five you've lost seven and a half imagine running around an athletics track and let's say you are uh, you're in the lead and you are gaining at 10 meters per lap faster than the person that's in second so after the first lap you're in the lead by 10 meters after the second lap you're in the lead by 20 meters after the third lap you're in the lead by 30 meters Keep that principle in your head as we go through this, which means after one lap of the race, if they've matched their qualifying times, this is the order as they go across the line. These are the gaps in between each competitor of 0.25 of a second in between each car, which means as you go down, 10th is now 2.25 seconds behind the lead car. That's after one lap. After two laps, then gaps have all doubled. So it's now half a second in between each car as the field begins to spread out. OK, which means the 10th place is now four and a half seconds behind the leader. They're all stretching out and we're, we're assuming this is a uniform stretching out. OK, imagine getting a piece of plasticine and stretching it out. OK, individual marks along that plasticine as you stretch it out, the gaps in between each mark then become uniform okay after 10 laps again each lap is assumed to be the same as their qualifying laps they've done 10 of those laps so after 10 laps now rather than being 0.25 of a second behind at which it was after one lap after 10 laps that's two and a half seconds and then gaps are all two and a half seconds, which means now 10th place is 22 and a half seconds behind the leader. You can see that final column is the gaps behind the leader for each of the top 10 cars. After 20 laps. Now, after 20 laps, it's 20 lots of 
a quarter of a second, which is five seconds. Five seconds separate each competitor along that track. OK, which means when you get down to Norris in seventh, he's now 30 seconds behind the lead car. Gasly in 10th, 45 seconds. Imagine this going on in a race. These gaps are increasing. The field continues to spread out, lapping lap after lap at their optimum pace. And this is how the gaps grow. OK, we're ignoring pit strategy. We're ignoring DRS trains. We're ignoring that. We're looking at the general principles because this is the key, the general principle. After 30 laps, the gaps between each competitor would be seven and a half seconds, which means as you go down, third place is two lots of second, uh, seven and a half seconds. There's Perez is seven and a half seconds. Leclerc is a further seven and a half seconds back, which means he's 15 seconds behind Verstappen. That same principle extrapolates down each of those competitors. So Gasly is 67.5 seconds behind the leader after 30 laps. Now, after 40 laps, each competitor, there is 10 seconds now separating each competitor. 10 seconds between first and second, 10 seconds between second and third, 10 seconds between third and fourth, and so on. Gasly in 10th is 90 seconds behind the leader. If Verstappen is lapping at 1 minute 20, that is 80 seconds. 60 add 20, 80 seconds. So if Gasly is 90 seconds behind him, that is more than 80 seconds, which means Gasly is now lapped. Ocon in ninth is 80 seconds. So therefore, it means Verstappen is, has either just lapped him or is about to lap Gasly. Sorry, Ocon in ninth. That, that being the 80 seconds. So that's after 40 laps. After 50 laps, look at the gaps. Now after 50 laps. Lapping at these pace, these lap times, which were their optimum lap times, if they continued for 50 of those laps, then look at the gaps between each driver. The gaps between each driver would be 12 and a half seconds in between each one, which means third place would be now 25 seconds off the lead. Um, seventh place would be 75 seconds off the lead. Eighth place, Piastri now, 87 and a half seconds off the lead. Remember the leader is lapping in 80 seconds and if Piastri is 87 seconds behind him it means he has been lapped that's after 50 laps after 60 laps then we look again the now 60 laps and it's a quarter of a second a quarter of 60 is 15 see what we're doing 15 seconds in between each competitor which means fifth place Alonso is now 60 seconds off the leader after 60 laps, he started lapping. His lap time is a second a lap closer than uh, off Verstappen's best time. Verstappen can go around in 120. Alonso can go around in 121. So after 60 laps, Verstappen's got a 60 second lead. OK, look further down the field. Anybody that is further behind than 80 seconds has been lapped. After 70 laps. Then we've got, look at the gaps here, 70 laps, the 17 and a half seconds between each driver. And then you can look down here, uh, Stroll in sixth, 87 seconds back. So Stroll has now been lapped. 80 laps. Then the, the 80 lots of a quarter of a second is 20 seconds. All right. So therefore, there's now 20 seconds in between each competitor. You look back. Alonso in fifth is now 80 seconds behind the leader. So the Verstappen is either just lapped or just about to lap Alonso in fifth place. Now, we can bring into it the, the effect pit strategy. For example, if we take it back to 30 laps for pit strategy, for example, if we would assume that uh, pitting loses you 25 seconds, going at slower speed down the pit lane, getting your tyres change and then back on track. Let's say you lose 25 seconds. So for example, Ocon, if he'd pitted right now and added 25 seconds to that, he'd be 85 seconds back, meaning that he'd be lapped. So that could be after 30 laps. Okay. He, th this, these are the scenarios that you can build in, but we could, 
I don't want to overcomplicate it at this moment. I want to keep it simple. So we can see that as time goes on, drivers fall further behind the leader and they will then get lapped. But look at the gaps between each competitor. Relatively speaking, first has got a lead of 20 seconds over second. But sec the second place still wants to be able to challenge first. They're, they're, uh, technically, you were saying that is still the race for first place. Seventh is it still in a race with six. There's 20 seconds separating them, but they're the two competitors that are contesting for sixth and sec seventh at that moment in time. Obviously, eighth is trying to contest with seventh. They're all racing one another. And if, for example, a car develops a fault and you need to... Um, you hear the pit saying lift and coast lift and coast you've got you're using too much fuel or something's overheating we need you to ease off we need you to manage this we need you to slow down your tires are wearing out we need you to slow down to manage this situation okay remember it's a 25 second pit window therefore if you're 20 seconds back and that person needs to make a pit stop you're going to get that place aren't you so if somebody needs to make a either slow down or make a pit stop you're going to gain a position on them. Even being 20 seconds back, you're still in that race with that competitor. So this is the 2020 Secure Grand Prix. The 2020 Secure Grand Prix was contested over 87 laps, I believe. We'll go onto the timing screen. It should confirm that. This is track of view. This shows you the positions of the cars at the point in time where there was a safety incident and they deployed the safety car. At that moment in time, the two Mercedes of Russell and Bottas were in the pit, so you can't see them dots. They disappear off screen. But Perez, in the racing point, is in third. He's out at turn seven. OK, if you look back from turn seven, you've got a grey dot of Magnussen. Now he's down in 14th. Further along the road, you've got uh, at turn four, you've got Alex Albon. He's in sixth position. Then you've got behind him, Kimi Raikkonen in 15th. Out at, um, where are we? We're looking at turn 11. Sebastian Vettel in 12th position in the red dot. How do you unravel all of that? How do you make sense of all of that? Here is the timing screen for when that safety car is deployed. This is lap 63 of 87. If you go down the... Uh, You've got the list of drivers and then you've got the list of the, uh, where are we? We've got the gaps in between, sorry, the gap back from the leader, this first column. So pit, pit, and then Perez is 45 seconds behind the lead. Ockham's 47 seconds behind the lead. We come down to Gasly in 10th. He's 1 minute 17 seconds behind the lead. Uh, Norris is 128 behind the lead. Vettel might be 140 behind the lead, but he's a lap down. I'm making that figure up. It doesn't have that actual numerical figure because once you've been lapped, it just lists it as being plus one lap. But that could be one, one minute 40. Giovinazzi could be one minute 60. Who knows? Uh, Magnussen could be one minute 65. Um, well, we, can, we can actually make, we can work this out, actually. Um, Vettel's plus 10 seconds behind Norris so actually where it says Vettel plus one lap he's actually plus one minute 38 seconds behind the lead Giovinazzi is a further nine seconds behind that let's call it 10 so it means he's approximately 20 seconds behind Norris so Giovinazzi where it says plus one lap actually it's one minute 28 seconds back from the lead Magnussen's a further 17 seconds behind. Let's call it 20. So he's 40 seconds back from this. So it's plus two minutes and eight seconds behind the lead. See what we're doing there. OK, the interval, five seconds, 37 seconds, one second, one second, seven seconds, 6.9, four, four, six. OK, and then it's got their lap times. All of these competitors are in that race. They're all trying to compete for position. If the car in front of them suffers some sort of difficulty then and, and has to slow or has to pit, then you should have the opportunity of gaining that place. That's motor racing. Everybody should follow that. There should be no, nobody contesting that. Now, 
this is quite key. Um, if we go to, so this is the slide that shows track of view at the point where the safety car deployment is announced. That was the timing screen at that point in time. And this is what the field looks like bunched up behind that safety car. After the safety car has been lapping a while, all them competitors bunch up. Now, if you see Perez, Perez will be the first car behind the safety car, the pink dot behind the safety car. The fourth dot back is a grey dot of Kevin Magnussen. Now, Kevin Magnussen is in 14th position in this race. And there'll be cars further on, mixed up in that order, um, that are either lapped or, that you know, they're, they're behind lap runners. So, in Formula One, in motor racing, they get released. And what that is for is, if we go back to um, each of these, each of these positions... We can go after 10 laps, where there's two and a half seconds between each competitor. After 20 laps, where there's five seconds between each competitor. After 30 laps, where there's seven and a half seconds. 40 laps, 10 seconds between each. When the safety car comes out, all of these advantages are lost. The field bunches. Okay, so all of these 10 seconds in between each competitor, they all get nullified and what happens is they bunch up down to this position so there's just a half a second between each competitor now the problem is this because of a safety situation and because of the lapping situation if we go to this point in here who is ahead of Magnus Magnuson now that's Giovinazzi Giovinazzi is this um Burgundy dot approaching turn 10. Now, Giovinazzi, whilst these are going slow behind the safety car, Giovinazzi is going at a much higher speed and will go around this track and join the back of the pack. Put Magnussen in 14th, okay? He is held back here. And so whilst all these gaps that were between each of the competitors, which let's say there were 10 seconds each, whilst they will become nothing, Magnussen isn't allowed to do that. Why? He was previously only 10 seconds behind him. Why should he not get the chance to be um, the same distance behind Giovinazzi as the rest? He's still racing. If Giovinazzi suffers a problem and has to ease off or has to pit, being that far ahead now, where he was only previously 10 seconds ahead, being that far ahead now, he can go in and out of that pits free of charge and Magnussen won't gain that place. Just because the leader has come by and passed you doesn't mean your race is over. OK, your position there is not interfering with the race between the leaders. OK, your position is there because you're still racing those cars around you. But the safety car deployment has caused this situation which you're held back. The car that you are in a race with isn't hold back and they can disappear off into the distance. Hence, we have the safety car procedure being what it is and it restores that parity to the whole competition. All of those gaps are nullified down to effectively half a second between each car. So all advantages gained are set to virtually zero. All right, it's really the running order first down to last in the correct order and to achieve that you have to release any cars that have been lapped and held back and let them catch the back of the pack that's how you do it brundle will suggest oh why don't you just let them drop back to make that order well if you let them drop back they've done a lap less they've used a lap less fuel they've used a last let uh, a lap less of tire wear a lap less of rubber what does that mean? That they can potentially push harder because their tyres and their amount of fuel left can allow them to push harder. That's that's unfair. Hence, you have to make them complete the same distance as the cars they're competing against and you have to then give them that time to make it around. That safety incident, dealing with a safety incident has caused that situation 
and hence you have to do this procedure to unravel that in order to allow racing to go again. OK, in order to allow racing to go again. Because you can't have a situation where you just have, well, these top three, they, they're in a position now that they can race. But actually, fourth isn't as close to third as third is to second. There's a, he still has to go buy this car. It might get blue flagged, but he's still... If they're all five metres behind each other, but with a car in the way, fourth is ten metres behind uh, third. Well, why are you allowing that? It has to be even. It has to be fair. It has to be fair to all competitors. They're all racing each other. The, 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 the incident, the safety concern, has prevented racing. It's nullified racing for everybody. So in order to resume racing, then conditions have to be fair to everybody. That's the whole point of it. When has the sport ever told you this? What the sport tells you is, oh, it's to get them out of the way. Um, we can go racing with the lapped cars in place. You can't. You can't. There's no interpretation of the rules whatsoever that enable that. But you're being lied to. You're being lied to by the sport. You are being lied to by the sport itself. I could do if I had an hour, I would do an hour's video on this and make it a lot, lot clearer than what I'm doing. So I'm not giving the best representation of this. If I had the technology, I would give you a better rep representation of this. I've got limited resources and I've got limited time because I know people switch off. Look at what the sport is doing. They are lying to you. They're not explain, explaining the fundamentals, the basic principles. And instead, they're asking you questions. What do you think? What do you think? And you don't know. You don't know because you've never thought about it and they've never told you. Why? Why would that be? Why would the sport do that? Why has the sport never explained the purpose of the safety car rule to you? Why has never any of the big YouTube channels never explained the purpose of the safety car rule to you and broken it down to fundamental principles? Because if you start understanding this, you start realising the exact nature of what was done in Abu Dhabi. The fact that they purposely fixed it and they were lying about it before they fixed it. That is, that's the systematic nature of this. Now, this is the position of these cars circulating the track. Jack Aitken, which is the blue dot, just having crossed the start finish line. He is the last lapped car. He has just been released. The field is starting to form the correct race order now, but Jack Aitken is still almost a lap behind. One, so this lap that they're about to commence for Perez is the mandatory safety car lap that they have to perform to give these competitors the opportunity to catch the back of the pack. At the end of that lap, this is what it looked like. Okay, where is Aitken? Where is Fittipaldi? Aitken is out at turn four. Fittipaldi is at turn eight. They are out of the way of the race between the leaders. Okay, they're out of the way. We're now in the correct race order. First down to 17th. It is the right order, but they're not yet bunched. Michael Massey was the race director here. According to the letter of the rules, the letter of the regulations, you can now go racing again. But Massey did not set them off racing again because he kept that safety car out on track for a further lap. He used his discretionary use of the safety car because he's got overriding authority. And that overriding authority is on the grounds of safety. If he has concerns over safety on that track, it doesn't matter about what regulations say or if he started these regulations. If he's got a safety concern, he'll use the safety car and say, no, I'm going to use the safety car because I need to ensure safety. So he'll use that for the purpose of safety. OK, and then he'll apply the regulations again. The, the other thing that he can use it for, uh, his overriding authority for, is on the ground of sporting fairness, which is what he's doing here. He keeps the safety car on track for another lap. And after that lap, this is what happens. Aitken has virtually caught back up. 
and by the cut by turn 18 he will have turned caught up the safety car has been withdrawn now and they're just about to cross the start finish line to go racing again they're in the correct race order the gaps between them are all about half a second and that is how you go racing again in motorsport after a safety incident all of those gaps that have stretched out over the course of the race are all nullified and for every competitor brought back to zero effectively half a second with the length of each car and a little bit of a gap in between each car and then we go racing it's fairness to every competitor everyone's still trying some something happens to the car in front of you you get you gain a position if you're left a lap down and something happens to that car that's in front of you on the road in, in one place ahead of you but being allowed to gain a lap on you due to a safety incident that competitor can probably pit maybe get a new nose cone get a new set of tires do whatever's needed get back out on track ahead of you because they gained all of that time unfairly due to a safety incident that hindered you and yet they got that benefit and 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 were able to maintain that position that's the fundamental principles of what is going on and yet the sport lies to you it wants to neglect anybody that's been lapped and as you go over the course of the race that could relate to any competitor as we've gone through the slideshow, we saw we've, we showed you we got all of those in the top ten that eventually got lapped as as the race went on. They all matter. They're all point scoring positions. At no point do you go, oh, well, you no longer matter because you've been lapped. Of course, they all matter. Anything can happen to any of those cars at any stage, and the people that are contesting for position with them in and around them should have the ability to gain those places and that that time gap should not be artificially elongated due to a safety incident and that is what the unlapping procedure is for it is mandatory it is not optional and yet the sport lies to you and if you now listen to the video that i'm going to uh, attach as the recommended video to watch at the end of that click on that that will show you the audio from abu dhabi where martin brundle and david croft are lying to you about the rules of the sport as they are in commentary before the so-called human error. They are setting it up, they're conditioning you to believe that that's possible and what that proves, and it proves this, is that that was premeditated. They are serving to condition the viewer to believe something that wasn't possible. They're paid to do so. And they did it.